Should you buy a house now? Or should you wait until prices crash? Let's see what the numbers say. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hans Strazina, and as always, this is my lovely wife, Kristen. We're with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International. Proud to be here. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we are exploring the topic that is on everybody's mind, which is, should you buy now, given that prices are subtly down and interest rates are relatively still low, or should you wait for a big crash and a big adjustment to prices and, and ultimately is that gonna be a better deal? So what we've done is teed up a couple of scenarios and these are all sort of hypothetical, high level numbers. Obviously nobody knows what's gonna happen with prices and rates and so forth, but hopefully this is a thought exercise that will give you some context to, to really chew on and decide what the right move for you and your family is. As always, if you get value out of this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because we're gonna continue to put out consistent content just like this and you are not gonna wanna miss it. So without any further ado, let's talk about these numbers. So disclaimer first, we are not lenders. So we do have a few really wonderful lender partners and so feel free to get in touch with us at the email addresses below in order to uh, speak with a lender yourself. So we wanted to contextualize this for you guys a little bit first. What we are gonna be looking at today are 30 year fixed loans. So that's a loan product we're looking at. And we're gonna go through four different scenarios. First scenario is gonna be if you buy now based on today's rates. Next scenario is gonna be if you wait for home values to go down 5%, but then also deal with the interest rates coming up a little bit. Third scenario is if you wait for home values to come down 20%, and then interest rates will have come up even more. And then the final scenario, those first three scenarios are all with 20% down. So the final scenario is if you wait for the market to come down 20%, but you only do 10% down. So let's dive into the first scenario. That is if you buy now. So for all of these, we're gonna be looking at a home value of 1.5 million. So let's say you've got a home that is worth 1.5 million and you're gonna put 20% down. So that means you've got an 80% loan amount, which is gonna be 1.2 million. And let's say you've got an interest rate at 5.75%, which is consistent with what many of our buyer clients are telling us they're getting quoted these days. If you were to do that, your monthly payment, and this is just principal and interest, we're not including any taxes or insurance for any of these numbers today, your principal and interest would be $7,003 per month. So if prices go down 5%, that same $1.5 million home would be 1.425 as a purchase price. That would reduce your loan amount, assuming an 80% uh, loan to value of 1.14 million as opposed to the one two. But of course, if we wait for the prices to go down, the interest rates are gonna keep coming up. I think we can all agree there. And let's say you got a 6.5% interest rate. So uh, three quarters of a point increase from our first scenario. Now, even though you paid less for the house on the purchase price, your monthly payment has gone up uh, just over $200 to 7,205 monthly. So an increase of just over 200 bucks a month. So then let's say prices go down 20%, so a major drop in the market, prices go down 20%. That means for this same home that was 1.5, we're now looking at it being worth 1.2. So let's say same loan amount, 80%. Now your new loan amount is gonna be 960,000. But let's say in the time that the market has come down, the interest rate has gone up to now 7%. So then your monthly payment would be 6,387. So this is the scenario where the monthly payment does come down substantially, just about 600 bucks a month lower than what it was in the buy now scenario. And one caveat to that scenario is that uh, that falls under the conforming loan limit. And so depending on what type of loan, either a jumbo or a conforming loan, um, generally speaking, at least right now, the jumbo products are pricing better because of the uh, debt to income requirements, the reserve requirements, etc. So you're getting a better interest rate on those as opposed to conforming. So just make sure that you're aware of the difference between the two, how that might affect your interest rate because um, 
potentially a conforming loan limit could be even higher than, than uh, a jumbo loan, and you're right there relative to the Alameda County limits. So let's look at this fourth scenario, because of course, if the market and real estate corrects that much, presumably stocks and presumably other investments are gonna do the same. So assuming you had your down payment tied up in the stock market or in an RSU income and that isn't performing as well, now you have less, uh, so you're only putting 10% down. So that same 1.2 purchase price with a 10% uh, down product gives you a loan value of a million and 80. At 7% interest, uh, that puts your monthly principal and interest at $7,185. So this is a really interesting exercise to go through because what we're hearing from a lot of buyers these days is, should I buy now, even though interest rates have gone up, or should I just wait for the market to come down? And the reality of it, after looking at all of these numbers, is that unless you're gonna wait for it to come down substantially, 20% or more, and the interest rates are not gonna rise by that much, it still does make sense to buy now. And assuming that your down payment is protected and you have the ability to have that 20% down when the prices come down substantially, because as we know in the last recession, a lot of people saw the opportunities, they just didn't have the cash or the liquidity to be able to pounce on them. And so you really ultimately have to ask yourself, what are you buying? Are you buying an investment or are you buying a home? Because I think for a long time, those have been sort of the same because equity has gone up and prices have gone up so substantially. But uh, now that is not necessarily the case, uh, at least from the equity rise and the value rise perspective. And so if what you're looking to do is establish yourself in a neighborhood, um, get into a school district, get into a walkable scenario, whatever the case is, you really have to decide what that's worth to you today versus in these future hypothetical scenarios and what you think your earning power is going to be, what you think your stock portfolio is going to do, which obviously no one has a crystal ball. But ultimately, when you look at the net of all of this, unless prices plummet and interest rates hold relatively low uh, and, you, and you have the cash to capitalize on that, that's the scenario where you might want to wait. Otherwise, the numbers suggest that you'd probably be better off buying it now and, and getting into that house from a payment perspective at least. Um, so it's something to consider ultimately with what your bigger picture goals look like because ultimately you're the one who's gonna be making that payment. You're the one who's gonna be living in the house and that is the most important thing at the end of the day. And the reality too is that real estate remains a really strong long-term investment. And so sometimes, and for good reason, it makes sense to get into the weeds and be crunching the numbers left and right. But ultimately, if it's gonna be a place that you and your family wanna be for a long time, then what we've seen over history is that it's still a great investment. So wrapping this whole thing up, we were talking about 30-year fixed mortgage products. We didn't talk about arms or adjustables. We didn't talk about interest only. We didn't talk about some of these other products that might actually make that payment even lower. Aside from the fact like we talked about in our last video, uh, which we'll link to up here, what alternative negotiating strategies we've been using with our clients to help them really get a better deal uh, in the terms of the contract, not just the price. Uh, so there's a lot of levers you can pull and ultimately uh, use to be successful right now. So ultimately what we hope you understand from this example and this thought exercise is there are a lot of options uh, and necessarily waiting doesn't mean you're going to get a better price. You might get a lower purchase price, but you might be spending more on a monthly basis to get that lower valued home. So we hope you got a lot of value out of this. As always, please like and subscribe because we're gonna continue to put out content just like this and you're not gonna wanna miss it. This is Hans and Kristen with the Gunderman Group signing off. See you on the next one.